Hi, my name is Andrew Hoffman, and I just finished my 20th career as a teacher. My family and I recently decided that uh, it was time for a move, so we left Denver, Colorado, and we've recently relocated in Bend, Colorado, Bend Oregon. One of the things that, uh, that kind of came with that geographic change was, was an idea of, is it time to try something different than, than being a traditional public school teacher? Uh, and that's kind of what has led me here to you guys. You know, I've, I've had the great honor of working with thousands of kids and, and literally a chance to change their lives. And uh, I hope to continue to leverage a lot of my strengths and skills to be able to do that kind of work. As much as I've been a teacher in my life, I've also been a learner. Uh, you realize that uh, learning is an important part of being a teacher. So uh, I've been an avid reader. Uh, I consume a lot of nonfiction, especially science. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all in on my family. I have two kids and, and kind of that school age zone that, uh, that loves school. So it's great to see uh, what school looks like in their eyes. And then I'm a really avid outdoorsman. Um, I really connect with nature and, and like to push my body and my mind uh, outside. I got a degree in environmental population and organismic biology from the University of Colorado. Um, and I kind of wanted to be a wildlife biologist, but I realized that there weren't a lot of jobs there. So I pretty quickly pivoted to teaching. Uh, and I started uh, teaching middle school science, but I didn't have uh, a background in education. So I had to go to Metro State University and get a licensure that first year while I was teaching. And really what I discovered is that I was really good at it. Even without the background and being a teacher, I had just a natural fit and aptitudes that made me really comfortable and effective at meeting the kids' needs and building relationships and teaching really important content to those students. So I taught seventh and eighth grade life and physical science, and then pretty quickly I moved into the high school environment where I taught biology, uh, AP biology, environmental science, uh, and a STEM course. In those moments, I also had a lot of leadership opportunities. I was the facilitator of the biology team, the environmental science team. I was the academic coordinator of the science department, and then I was also the coordinator of that STEM program that, uh, that tried to meet the need of those next level learners. And in those moments, I discovered that I was really good at not only teaching students, but also those around me. I had four student teachers uh, and in those team environments where I facilitated all those meetings, I helped design, build curriculum and teach other teachers how to teach that curriculum. I'd oftentimes have other teachers in my classroom to watch me teach as I implemented new curriculum into the work that we were doing. And uh, what I really discovered is that I'm an educational leader. I went on and got a degree in educational leadership from the University of Denver, and that's kind of who I believe myself to be these days, is, is a leader in education and being able to teach others how to be good educators by developing strong curriculum, curriculum that's engaging for students and uh, impactful for them. Over the last few years, uh, teaching remotely uh, has taught me a few surprising things. One is that I'm a really good remote teacher. I was able to really connect with kids online. I was able to develop relationships and hold those kids accountable. And uh, that was something that I think a lot of teachers feared. Uh, I felt really comfortable doing those things. And I also had some experiences working with some programs that were not great. Right? My district, district scrambled pretty quickly to try to find some online resources that were not ideal. Uh, and then as I continue to think, you know, all those years as a STEM teacher, I used to tell my students that they're going to be pursuing degrees that don't yet exist as high school students, uh, that, that they're going to be going into career fields that don't yet exist. And when I read the mission and the vision statement that, uh, that Prisma has, I kind of resonated and felt connected a lot to that. Number one, I'm going to be the person that I told those, those students that they're going to be. I'm going to pivot my career and try something new. Uh, number two, I'm going to push the bounds of, of what education should be. And that seems like what Prisma is doing. For many, many years, um, I was teaching kids uh, to be experiential learners, student-centered, inquiry-based. Uh, and those were things that oftentimes bumped up against the guardrails of traditional education. So I spent my career trying to work from within that public setting to try to change schools. And Prisma kind of offers me a chance to do similar work, but, but maybe in a platform that gives me more leverage to impact more people in that way. So I think in a lot of ways, uh, personally and professionally, Prisma aligns with what I'm looking to do. As I look at school for my own children, you know, 100 years ago, if they were doing the same thing. I want to kind of be the change that helps uh, foster in and, and usher in a new era of education for students that are able to take that kind of work on. And ultimately, I'm excited to continue to change the lives of students.